All right, boys and, uh, well, the 1.3% of you that are not boys. We made an antenna, uh, where'd it go? Yeah, um, you've probably seen at this point um, the antenna that we made, which was not antenna, uh, an antenna matching thingy, which was the brass knuckles. I mean, the QRP guys, tri-band vertical antenna, as you see here. Now, uh, I'm not the best at winding toroids. I'm, I'm okay at soldering, and this didn't have that much stuff to solder on. But I already screwed up the toroids. You see one of them is uh, clearly out of focus. And you can see one of them is one way and the other one is the other way and this one toroid on the right is like really kind of it's fine um but i mean look back in in the past here you know i have some some toroids that i made long ago before uh you know i became an adult you can have a whole box full of them here's this toroid i don't even know why i guess it's a common mode choke and then a couple of these that were also, you know, nobody knows what those were made for. I think I even have like, I think I might even have one in there somewhere. Oh, there's a DX idiot. We're going to need you in a minute, but you know, for now, uh, you know, sit tight. <coughs> ah, yes. This magical thing that actually works. It's a, it's another infed antenna, um, matching dukuki, but it is, uh, it's adjustable. With this convenient, with this convenient, whatever, with this convenient adjustable capacitor, and it, it works pretty good. And I haven't used it in like probably like five or six years. But now we have this, and it has switches, and you don't have to tune it. It's just switches. So uh, you know, I put it together, soldered her up, and let's go test it. So in order to test this guy, and and also if you can't hear me, I apologize. The cicadas clearly are not listening, so. I'll have to yell into the microphone. Anyway, to test this guy, we're gonna bring back our old pal, the DX Idiot. Uh, and instead of just a 33 foot vertical for 40 meters, we're gonna use this, which is a 17, it only needs one 17 foot vertical wire and then a counterpoise or ground of, I think it said like 10 foot wires or something like that. So we're gonna do that. And we have the Nano VNA sitting over here, charging up because, um, well, I don't know, you tell me, but that battery pack looks a little bit puffy, um, so it's not good, and I probably need to go get the calibration kit for that, but if this thing explodes, I'll just use the 7300, uh, and that'll be fine, I guess. Okay, so the DX, or not the DX, but it, the, the vertical antenna, the QRP guys one, it requires a 17-foot vertical, birds flew by my head, a 17 foot vertical element, and uh, mine's 33, and my arm spans about 5 feet, so 1, 5 feet, 2, 10, 15, and 20, and right here, I'm going to cut it off, we're going to do 20 feet, and then cut it down to 17 feet, because you don't want to cut twice, measure once or something. Yeet. you have it the DX idiot 2.0 with a 17 no 20 foot vertical and a slightly elevated radio field as you can see here with the assistance of very out of focus masking tape attached directly to the Pactina vertical pole thing all right so got this uh, BNC over here that goes into the nano well wait a second hold up I'm forgetting something I need to put this onto the thing. Duh. Alright, so what I had to do was a uh, pretty... It's a... It's a... It's an abominate... Steve! Can you, can you be quiet real quick? These iron pipe the, that are real popular for Steve, you want to chill out? Like, what's going on here? They're the exact right size to fit Steve. three boxes in. I got the right cicadas to be other. quiet, but now why can't so I get you to be quiet? Steve! Be quiet! Come on! Like, uh... Thank you. Uh, actually, I didn't get the cicadas to be quiet. Anyway, 
Uh, I had to um, Frankenstein the DX Commander. Uh, you mean the DX Idiot, right? That's okay. guy onto here, and then um, I have a little. <laughs> what am I doing with my life? I have a little jumper that goes from the ground point on here to like just like I don't. I guess you could call it a clamp. I am literally get the light in there. Literally just clamping on to like the DX Idiots metal bits and the other parts go into the, the thing like this is clamping onto the wire to the other thing so uh <laughs> I, if it doesn't work it's uh it's probably not the qrp guy's fault it's it's probably this guy and also sorry to tell you to shut up steve but whatever you have to say here is probably very important about shack organization i can't i just can shut up okay about shack organization is probably really good as you saw in my awful, um, awfully organized uh, work workbench ba basement, um, it's very timely that it comes out with a video like that. So go check it out in the description. Back out of the heat and away from the cicadas uh, for a second in my basement. We now need to calibrate the Nano VNA using the load, the short, and the open. Otherwise, I would uh, or other, otherwise called the SOL calibration standards and luckily this thing has not exploded yet so I'm gonna do that real quick and uh, we'll get back outside into the horrible you know heat and mosquitoes Ugh. all right I'm literally sitting in the grass and the mosquitoes are coming at me bro but we're ready to go I got my little adapter I got her cowled up and this is gonna be great this is gonna be great this is gonna be perfect the first time. And I gotta... And we see... Oh! Well, there's a dip. Huh. That's good, maybe. I didn't even check to see what the switches are on. It says we're on 20 meters and 20 meters. So this should be... Yeah, this one's on 20, this one's on 20. So this should be at 20 meters but we're at 12.980 blur <laughs> and the dip is at 11.140 megahertz so that's interesting probably because our antenna is 20 feet and not 17. now i've switched it to the 30 meter mode and it goes down even further what the heck 8.610 megahertz what's going on here now on the 40 megahertz one it's even it's gone off the map and i've also gone off the ability to focus the other kind of wacky thing that i realized is i have a one to one or 1.92 swr practically throughout the entire band that does not seem very accurate at all and at the null it's like 1.19 1.2 Two. So, hmm, it's a bit suspicious. So I cut off just about one foot. I also made a new best, my new best friend called Deet. And I get now 11.370, so it went up a little bit. And with another foot gone, I now have a perfectly flat 1.18 SWR across the entire 1 to 30 megahertz band. And also when I wiggle it, it messes up in some different ways. So I think my soldering job on this connector, oh, oh almost got it soldering on this connector is probably there oh nope that was on there it goes yeah so um let me go fix that real quick oh wait there oh see now i'm at 13 point about two megahertz just gotta not move at all okay so after like several minutes of re-soldering dinking around turns out it wasn't even the board it was this dinky dumb cheap little rubber so I got another one Put this one in new cable works just fine So it's sitting at 12.890. Let's take off another foot another couple of feet down and I am happy with what I see here At 14.050 is the start of the null. It says 1.06, but don't trust that um, Let's try the other bands. So right now it's set to 20 and 20 So if we move this lower one down to 20 to there we should get 10 uh, 30 meters which is 10 ish megahertz so we go down here that's not bad 10 megahertz is right about there out of focus obviously but you get the gist of it 10.280 I'm, I'm going from 1 megahertz on the left side to 10 megahertz on the right side so I'm getting like the whole H up band 
that's not bad at all. So let's try 40 meters, which is moving this slider down to here. If you could see that. And the queue is a lot narrower, so let's see where this is. 6.510 is about the dip, and 7.090 comes up pretty high. So this is telling me I need to make the antenna even shorter. But what I'm going to do first before I do that is recalibrate this nano VNA to make sure I'm not... Because this top line here is 1.18 SWR. That doesn't make any sense to me, so I need to recalibrate it, I think. So I'll be right back. Chrissy really doesn't like the rain, which all of a sudden, this is what I have to deal with. It's not even, it doesn't even make sense. I wonder if a, this, this video is now, uh, are nano VNAs waterproof and is your elevated radio system dog proof? Uh, <laughs> the 40 meter portion is really, really narrow and it's a little bit on the low side. Oh, just rain just plopped on there. Um, it's 6.510 is like the, the lowest null and it doesn't start to, when I get up to like 7 megahertz, this SWR blows up to 10. And this is after recalibrating it. But the other two bands are very nice. So at least if, if anything, this 17 foot uh, vertical is a um, dual band antenna, but I need to play around more with the, uh, the element size, you know, to actually figure it out. So, and also preferably not use speaker wire for this kind of portable antenna. Um, because speaker wire is a terrible portable thing. It's very tacky. It jumbles into tangles really easily and It's probably also not even waterproof. So who knows HQD had something going for him, but you know, there's better there's better wires out there also Justin say hi Cheers. <laughs> I can take it back out Percy be careful be careful Percy 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 Sorry dogs don't know about wires do they? It's okay. Oh, it's okay. Don't lick the deet. It's my friend. Oh, <laughs> Percy. We learned about this a minute ago. No, no, sit, sit. Good. Now, with high legs, leave. <laughs> Percy, come. Oh, 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 oh. Percy, come. Percy, don't eat the masking tape. Come. Oh, oh there you go. You're free! Now just don't move. Just don't move. 